Now coming to bone is a fact. It's a fact. Over exercising is more harmful. Now, if you see the picture on the left, this is how a normal bone is under the microscope. It has got small, small, these trabecular network. When you get osteoporosis, part of the bone is gone. It is not there, it is lacking, and that is why the bone is soft. When you have, when you undergo, when you do some simple exercises, walking one by one, gradually your this osteoporotic bone, where the calcium, the collagen, and the protein network is less, will gradually build up to something like this before. Now, something what Sela said before, I'll take it one step ahead. Osteoporosis is not something that you develop when you're 35 and 40 and 50 years old. The foundation of a bone is laid in childhood. Maybe we discover it later because now we have ways to find out how you can pick up osteoporosis by viewing all these DEXA machines and all. Once upon a time we never knew and only on X-ray we could pick up. A bone is built up when it is being grown like a foundation of a building. The foundation of a building is done when the building is made. After the building is made, you cannot put chuna in cement and expect it to be better. So if I have to have a good foundation, my bone is made when I am young, maybe around 15, 16, 18, 20, to stretch it up to 25, 26, 30 years of age. After that, taking calcium, bisphosphonates and vitamin D is just doing patchwork on an already bad bone. So the thing is that you're walking, that is why what she was saying to encourage children to go out and play is to build up your bones when you are young so you don't suffer from osteoporosis in later age. Osteoporosis later is a thing that we have bumped into because we can diagnose it now but you have already get, got it when you were young. So the whole purpose is just to be prevented and not treated. take proteins, I can take supplements, I can do walking, but then that is just sort of preventing a major disaster which is there a few years down the line. The, the whole aim is that it has to be done before. When your uh, bone protein, I mean when your bone making capacity of your body is good. As you grow later on, then the capacity of the body to build up bone is less. Okay. So now, how does it work, walking? What Sela has said, I'll add on to a little bit more to that. It increases strength. Again, what we mean by strength is not actual physical strength. It is the capacity of your, it is more of an endurance rather than actual bulk. Because to lift a 100 kg weight requires a different type of body structure. And to walk 15 minutes up an incline requires a different type of a body structure. What we are looking at is not those occasional 100 kg lifters. We want people who can walk for one and two hours at a time. That is how it increases your strength of your muscle, your bone and your ligaments. It improves coordination because your way you walk on which surface you are walking will be dependent on that. Of course, it supports balance simply because you are going to walk on a proper surface. And because everything is being done, it reduces the amount of injuries that you will get. Now, walking is a very less expensive hobby, pastime, work, whatever you might call, because you don't need anything at all. You just don't need anything except for a simple good pair of walking shoes. Now what do I need, what do I mean by good pair of walking shoes? Pair of walking shoes that the heels, the part of your shoe that you are wearing, these are not good walking shoes, but the, what I am going to, what I am showing you there, I am explaining you here, that the heel of your leg, it should be enclosed completely on all the three sides. You should not have slip-ons. And the height of your shoe should not go beyond this bone. Because if it goes beyond this bone, it will cause more pressure on your ankle. So all these fancy shoes that we see in the market, or on the net, they are harmful to you in the long run. They should be below the level of this bone, so it will support your leg for you. The toes inside should be absolutely free. No pointed, no tight fitting shoes. Canvas, simple shoes are the best. And most of these walking shoes, if you see, they have a small 
lump here in the middle when you're walking. That is known as an arch support. So it supports your leg for you when you're walking. And the sole, the entire foot, should not have PVC, should not have leather, should not have anything except for a very soft compressible rubber. A lot of people have these air cushion shoes which sound very good, they advertise also very well. They are extremely expensive but they are not good walking shoes. Now a lot of questions always, I don't have time in the morning, I am busy, my children have to go to school, my husband goes to office or the, I have to go to office, I don't have time. Morning is busy, I have to catch a train, there are a lot of traffic. There is no time when you can walk. You can walk with the sun when it rises. You can walk with the sun when it sets. You can walk when the sun is there. You can walk when the sun is not there. Go in the middle of night for a walk, there is no issues at all. Important is that you must walk and there should be a rhythm of walking. If I am a very hard pressed individual for time, I should not decide to walk every day. Because I know I cannot do it. So my body has to have a biological rhythm to walk. So either I walk twice a week, once a week is also fine. But if I walk for 10 days and then don't walk for 3 days, that is harmful to the body. Because then my body doesn't know how to adjust the schedule. That is why you can walk anytime you wish, whenever you are free. What is the age for walking? Again, there is no restriction. A young child as good as 2 to 3 years of age and an older person even at the age of 100, can go walking. There is no problem at all. Again, as I said, how much distance should I walk that you decide it is nobody, there are no compulsions. It is not necessary that if A person walks 20 minutes, B person should walk 20 minutes to get the same benefit. It depends on your body structure. It depends on so many issues. You should feel good at the end of the day. That is enough. That is more than enough. Now always for every issue that we do, there is a etiquette as we call it. What is a walking etiquette? You should be wearing shoes. Never walk bare feet unless you are walking on sand. If you are going on a beach, then you should, it is good to walk on dry sand. But everybody doesn't have beaches next to them. If you can go on a beach and walk on the dry sand, not on the wet sand. That is good for your feet, good for your quadriceps, good for your gastrox. No problem. Have a loose dress, not a tight fitting dress at all. Preferably go alone, so when you are concentrating on walking. And uh, walking can be boring after some time, so you know you can do something to make it more lively. Avoid too much talking. Avoid business talk, 100%. 100% avoid business talk. Don't take your office file, put it on your Walkman and listen to it as you walk. Don't dictate letters to anybody. Don't carry a dictaphone with you. And don't take a cell phone with you and when you talk business. When you are walking, and Muzaffar is going to come to it after me, it is going to be me and me alone and the rest of the world does not exist. Then only that walking will help me, otherwise I am wasting my time. Music, if you like, it is up to you. You can carry a small Walkman, Walkman portable with you, that is your choice. But you should be walking alone. If you go to a walking park, go with 10 people, but at the gate of the park you split and you decide after 20 minutes we are going to meet again. And in the park you don't know the person who is walking next to you. Pay attention to what you are doing and you will get the maximum physical and mental benefits out of that. I am sure Uzumah will probably go a little bit more detail into that. Then again, how much walking should I do? Every individual has a different level of body fitness. Somebody can walk half an hour every day. Somebody will walk five minutes and start panting after that. Normally, start when you have, when you are starting your walking, start very slowly, very gradually. Don't push yourself. One week, two weeks, three weeks and once you get into the stride and then you should in, as start initially 10-15 minutes, there is no, nothing lost. And then what you need to do is that increase by five minutes every week. Actual walking, initially you should walk for five minutes very very slowly. Get your mind together, get all your muscles, ligaments and joints together and decide that you are going to walk now. And then actually for 10, 15, 20 minutes, do serious walking and again slow down. You know, when you are walking, just flop your hands a little bit from side to side, make your body very loose and then just cool down and then you stop walking. Don't walk very fast and abruptly decide and go and you know, go home to have a coffee or breakfast or anything because that is going to harm you. So that 5 minutes cool down is very, very important to complete your walking cycle for the day. There is something which is called as a talk test. 
you know, when I was reading, because I was there, I had to read <laughs> something new I bumped into. Now, how fast should you walk? Normally, it is said you walk as comfortably as you are. There is no need to do jogging. There is no need to do running. How fast should you walk? I should walk is known as a talk test, but I should be able to talk and walk at the same time without getting breathless. So obviously, if you are a singer, or if you can sing breathless, the whole song without taking a deep breath, you could easily walk 20 kilometers an hour and still not get breathless. And if you are not one of the talking types, even one, two steps, then you start panting. So the individual thing, walk as comfortably as you can. No jogging and no running, because that is harmful for your knees and for your back. If you do jogging, when your muscles are not ready, after one or two weeks, you will realize you have started getting knee pain. No jogging until one year of regular walking. One year you do regular walking and then you have 5 minutes of uh, warm up, 5-10 minutes of walking, then you jog for 2-3 minutes, again walk for 2-3 minutes, again jog for 2-3 minutes. After doing like this for about 2 or 3 months, so 1 and a half year after regular walking, then you can do normal jogging. Again 6 months to a year of jogging and then you can do running. So maybe after 2 years of regular walk, Walking and jogging, then you should go to running. Never do on the first day. Or that will be the last day that you will jog. And as Sala said, second day you will be tired and that will be the end of your walking career. Walking posture, again relaxed, but not very tight. But keep your body well toned. You know, swing your arms as you walk. Keep your head up, your back straight, your abdomen to flat as much as you can, of course. Your toes pointing straight ahead. And while walking, that's, your strength should be as comfortably as you can walk. Not too much and not too little. <coughs> now, again controversies. What surface is good for walking? Ideally, a soft surface, mud, sand, is always preferred over tarmac. Because whenever you walk, there is always something like known as a resistance and an anti-resistance. When I put my leg down on the floor, there is a reaction to the ground and there is a reverse reaction which affects my foot, my ankle, my knee, my hip and my spine. So if the surface on which I strike my leg is not very good, then I will get a counter reaction which will be very, very painful. So soft walking is always preferred over a tarmac road. But that of course it depends if you have facilities or then it doesn't matter. So if you have proper shoes, then that will take care of this for you. Again, controversy, should I walk indoors, should I walk outdoors? It is more glamorous to walk indoors, because you go to a gym in Bombay, all these gyms are there, all well-known people come there, you know, you feel very this, but then that is not very good, because when you are walking on a treadmill and doing cardio, the treadmill is moving under your leg. Because the treadmill is moving under your leg, it is not giving you the resistance that you require. So at least 50% of your walking energy is wasted on the treadmill. If I have to compare, if I walk on a normal road for half an hour and I walk on a treadmill for maybe one and a half or two hours, then the benefit is the same. So if I want to get maximum benefit out of my walking, I should go outdoors and not indoors. Of course, the choice is yours. It's up to you how you want to go on. But, but your quality of the, I mean, the bone building, the muscle building, everything is much better on a hard surface. Osteoporosis exercises, simplest one is walking. It is easy. Anyone can do it. Nothing is required. And of course, it is very beneficial. At the same time, there are other exercises for osteoporosis. But of course, you need a big gym. It is expensive. It is not for everybody. You need trainers and it is difficult to go regularly to a gym. Anything new that we see in walking, there is something which is known as a Nordic stick, which allows you to walk in a particular way and it exercises your shoulders along with your leg. This lady, the stick that she has in her hand, this is known as a Nordic stick, which is at the level of your waist bone where you will hold it while walking. You normally should be using two. Something like a pedometer again will tell you how much you are walking. Okay, that's up to you. But these are all options to walking. Just because I don't have this and I will not walk is not acceptable. 
better option, I mean, one more further extension of walking, think active. If I have a lift in the building, I'm staying on the second floor or the third floor, don't use the elevator, walk. But a lot of people do stair climbing as an exercise, which is harmful, which is very, 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 very harmful. If you're staying on the fifth floor and for all your life you have been going up and down stairs and now there's a lift which has come in your building, don't use the lift, go up the stairs, yes. But I've never climbed a stair in my life and I go up and down 14 floors three times a day just to lose weight, that is harmful. Another simple thing what Saila was saying that you must make time for walking. In Bombay nobody has time, including me. We are all chasing the watch. So what normally I recommend to a lot of people that if my workplace is close to where I am staying, I should throw off my vehicle. No two-wheeler, no car. Walk to your office and walk back from your office. So you will be forced to walk that much in a day. You may not have time, but you will have to make time because you have to go to your office. So walk to office and walk back and that is enough. So I just bumped into this, that the average human being walks around two and a half to five thousand steps in a day. It sounds too much, but then maybe you think about it, it is actually true. This is something that we are all very familiar with. Walk and talk. We are all thankful to Abhishek Bachchan, because as orthopedic surgeons, our work has increased. People are bumping into cars, or let me say cars are bumping into them. People are falling down steps, pushing people here and there. Our quantum of our work has increased thanks to this ad, but of course it is obvious that Walk and talk is not a good idea at all. Your eyes have to be open, you have to see where you are walking. Just two days ago, here we had a couple of girls who were walking the, crossing the road outside the, uh, this opera house <laughs> cinema and both of them were talking on the cell phone, not with themselves, they were knocked down by a car. Both of them admitted here, I think they are being discharged. And to, uh, finally to sum it up, it's, a, it's the journey of a thousand miles, starts with a single step. So I call upon Uzefa to please take that step and chart our mind for us. Uh, I must admit here that we have uh, been working together for the last few days and I have been going through their material to organize it. I think what I learned when I organized it and what I am learning today is so much more additional. Thank you.